Okay guys, so these are the timing gears that we talked about on the front of our small block Chevy engine. And when we set these up, what you want to do is you want to put the gears on and we've, you can see that we've put paint marks on the, the, the locating dots or the timing marks. What you want to do is set this up so that your gears are dot to dot. That's going to get you uh, your initial timing. You're going to get you really close to where you need to be. And then, of course, we're going to degree the cam in or dial those in to verify that the timing is actually where it's supposed to be. But this is your initial starting point. Get them dot to dot, torque your bolts, and then we can put our degreeing tools onto the engine. All right, so the next thing we got going here, guys, you can see we've, we've got our degree wheel on the front of the engine, and we've got a dial indicator on the piston. We've also brought our piston up to its highest point of travel, and we've zeroed out our dial indicator. So we've got the piston right at top dead center, or what we call approximate top dead center, and we zeroed our indicator. In addition to that, we also put our pointer on the front of the engine. It's a fixed pointer and it is, you can see, pointing right at zero on the wheel or top dead center. So the top dead center or the zero on your degree wheel needs to coincide with top dead center over here. Now, the thing is, this is only approximate top dead center. Because the connecting rod, as it comes up to top dead center, has a little bit of dwell in it, we actually have to dial in the top dead center and make sure this is exactly true top dead center because the rod can be over to one side or the other and we can be off um, a couple of, couple of uh, thousands here. We can be off of top dead center a couple of thousands and that's going to throw our degreeing off when we go to degree this later. So we have to be at exactly true top dead center. Let me show you how we do that. All right, so to find true top dead center, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to run the the engine. <clears throat> we're going to turn the crankshaft so that that piston goes down in the cylinder about fifty thousandths on our indicator. We're going to go counterclockwise, and so if you watch the indicator here, you'll see we're going to go backwards. So it's moving down. The piston is moving downward in the cylinder now. We want to go to 50 thousandths, but when you go backwards or counterclockwise, 50 is right there, and then I'm going to go back to it. When I go backwards, I want to go past the point a little bit and come back just in case there's a little slop in that chain. So let's fine tune that at 50 right there. Just in case there's a little slop in the, ch in the timing chain, that'll get it out of there. Then we're going to look at our wheel. So if, if we read our wheel here, we are at exactly 12 degrees. Remember we started out at TDC here and we went down in the bore 50 thousand so we went down in the bore counterclockwise to 50 past 50 and back to it so we went past the 50 right back to it and that drew the piston down below the deck 50 thousandths and if we read our wheel we have exactly 12 degrees. Now, the next step is we're going to go back to top dead center and go down 50 on the other side. All right, so here we go. Now we're going to go clockwise. And remember, we're going back toward TDC. And you'll see this indicator, I'm going back up to my zero. And when I get to my zero, I'm at zero on the wheel here. I'm going to keep going clockwise and I'm going to go down 50 thousandths in the bore on the other side of top dead center. So I'm just gonna keep going. This time I'm gonna go right to 50 and stop because I'm going clockwise. There's really not a issue with slop in the chain. So we went right to 50 and we stopped. If we look at our mark here, we are on exactly 12 degrees. So when we went down in the bore, 50 thousandths on either side of top dead center, we discovered on our wheel here that we have 12 degrees on this side of top dead center and when we went counterclockwise, we had 12 degrees over here. What that tells me is if you have the same number of degrees on this side and the same number of degrees on this side, that means that your pointer here, when it is lined up with zero, is corresponding with exact true top dead center 
on that piston. Now, if we had 14 degrees here and 10 degrees over here, that would tell me that I was off a couple of degrees and I would have to just bend that needle because really what we're doing here is we're just making sure that our needle is on zero to uh, the pointing at the zero here when I am at true top dead center here. We're just corresponding those two things. This is the first step when you degree a cam. You can't skip this because if you skip it, and this is off a couple of degrees, all of the, the degreeing that you do after that is gonna be wrong. Okay, so we know based on that, that our zero on our pointer is corresponding with exact top dead center on our number one cylinder. At that point, you don't even need this indicator anymore. The only reason you have an indicator on the piston is to find true TDC. We can remove that indicator and we're done with it. As long as we don't move our needle, we'll be fine. I want to talk to you guys about another tool, the next tool we use. Now this is a really handy tool to have if you're going to degree a cam. I actually bought this from Summit and it is actually a lifter bore indicator. This goes right into the lifter bore. It has the bore, the, this is neat because it has a, a bore, um, it has the ability to go into the bore size of a small block Chevy and if you flip it around it has the small block Ford size on it so you can put the indicator on either end. This attachment here that rides on the cam lobe and the indicator are interchangeable. You can switch ends with them and they have a, a rubber seal on here that kind of gets it tied into that bore so this thing is not going to be moving up and down and you get a real accurate read on your lifter. So we just take our lifter bore indicator and we're going to start with the intake and you just put this right into your number one lifter bore and it fits in there snug and then we can actually see the rise and fall of the lifter while we degree our cam. It tells us where our cam lobe is so it's, it's a pretty neat deal. All right now that you got to that point the first thing we want to check is the camshaft lift. So we need to look at the specs of this cam because really the reason that we're degreeing a cam, there's a couple of reasons. The two main reasons that we degree a cam, number one, we want to verify that our cam timing is right and number two, we want to make sure that we have the right camshaft. Sometimes these cams get misboxed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our specs on this cam so we know what we're working with. So this is our cam card specs for our engine pro 1730 mc 1730 cam we're going to be using uh, 1.5 ratio rocker arms we have a valve lift on this engine of 420 and 433 now we're going to be measuring the lift at the lobe so we're going to have to multiply our lift by our rocker arm ratio to get these actual numbers because the rocker is going to, I mean obviously the rocker is not on the engine and the rocker is going to multiply the lift that we get at the lobe. Our advertised duration on this cam is 278, 288. The actual duration or the duration at 50 is 204, 214. And then of course our lobe center line, our intake lobe center line is 107 and our exhaust lobe center line is 117. Now we've got our degree wheel set up on the intake lobe. So we're going to be looking at these numbers right here. We're going to do our intake first and we need to verify that these numbers are correct. So let me walk you through how we do that. First of all, we're going to do lobe lift and then calculate valve lift. That's probably the easiest thing you're going to do. But to get lift, you, you can see that we have our dial indicator here and if I move the wheel here, I'm moving the wheel and the dial indicator is not moving. What that tells me you guys is we are on the base circle of our lobe. So what we do is on the base circle is we zero the indicator out and then we're just going to go clockwise in the direction of travel until we get to the highest point and that's going to tell us what our lift is. So lift is literally how far the valve opens like you saw in some earlier lessons. So this is our lobe and right now our indicator is on the base circle down here. What we're going to do is we're just going to rotate the engine until that lifter bore gauge rides the profile of that lobe all the way to the top because we want to know what the distance is or we want to know how far that lobe is going to push our lifter. The distance that it pushes that lifter is our camshaft's lift or it is how far it is actuating that valve. 
So if we start rotating our crankshaft here and we watch our indicator that's on our camshaft, now it's starting to move. And another thing you'll notice is it started to move right in this area where it says intake open, our indicator's here. So we want to count and see how much lift we have. So one rotation of this indicator is a hundred thousandths. So there's 100 and we keep going and now we're coming around to 200. There's 200 thousandths of lift. We're going to continue on 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 280, 281 lift, somewhere in there. So here's the dealio. We have a 1.5 rocker arm ratio on this engine. So since the rocker arm ratio is going to multiply the lift, we have to take and we're going to multiply our lobe lift by our ratio and that's going to tell us how much the valve is actually going to open because the rocker arm is an offset fulcrum and it multiplies that. The small block Chevy has a 1.5 ratio. So what we do is we take our lift that we got, so we're going to say we got 0 0.280 and we're going to say times our rocker ratio which is 1.5 and that gives us 420 thousandths of lift. Now let's go back and look at our spec. And our valve lift for our intake according to the cam card is 420 thousandths. When we did the math we got exactly 420 thousandths. This is uh, important because we need to verify that this is actually the cam that we purchased. Sometimes cams get misboxed. So far it's looking really good. It's looking like this is the right cam. So we verified that spec right there. The next spec that we're going to look at, we're going to skip duration. We got duration here. We're going to go to lobe center line. And the reason we're going to go to lobe center line is because the starting point for lobe center line is right here at max lobe lift. So here's what we're going to do. We know we're at max lobe lift right now. Lobe center line is going to be the center of the lobe. There's a, there's a process for that. So if we look at our cam lobe here, this is our base circle and this is our lobe. Remember we went from the base circle up to max lobe lift and right now our dial indicator is sitting right on the tip of that lobe. To get lobe center line, there's a process we use. We come back down off of the lobe 50 thousandths, and then we go back over to the other side of the lobe 50 thousandths on the other side, and we read the wheel here and here, and then we just divide those numbers by two, and that tells us our intake lobe center line. So I'll show you how that process works. Okay, so we're at max lobe lift now. We just did that. We got our lobe lift and our valve lift. Now, intake lobe center line is actually the starting point is at max lobe lift. That's right where we're at. We're at the tip of the lobe. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take, we know we're at the tip of the lobe, we're just going to zero our dial indicator and now we have a starting point. The first step in intake lobe center line is we want to rotate the engine backwards and we want to come back down off of the tip of the lobe 50 thousandths. So we're just going to go counterclockwise backwards. We're going to go past 50 on that indicator and then we're going to go right back to it. Now at that point we're going to read our degree wheel. Now if we read this wheel and we're using the white numbers, there are two sets of numbers on here for center line checking. You use white graduations. It tells you that on the front of the wheel and for valve timing we're going to use the black numbers. So we have uh, 77 degrees. Okay, 70, no, I'm sorry, 66 degrees. Make sure we get that right. So we have 66 degrees. When we came off there 50, we're reading 66 degrees on our pointer. Now we're going to go clockwise and we're going to go back up to the top of the lobe and we're going to go down 50 on the other side. So we're going to go clockwise. So here we go, we're back, going back up to max lobe lift. We're going to keep going until we get right to 50 this time and stop. Once we get to 50, we're going to read our wheel again. Now, on our wheel, we have 153. So 
we have our second reading here is 153. We'll put that first because it's a larger number. And then we also have 66. Now what you're going to do with these two numbers is you're going to add them together. So we're going to take 153 and 66 and add them. That gives us 219. Now what we're going to do with those numbers is you're going to divide them by 2 because remember this is crankshaft degrees the camshaft turns half the speed of the crank, so we need to find out what the camshaft degrees are to match our spec. So 219 divided by 2 is 109 and a half. We call that 109 if we are within a half a degree, right? So it is divided by 2 is 109.5 or 109. Now, we have to look at our spec. Okay, now our spec down here, guys, is 107. We got 109. Now I can tell you that with mild cams like this and the less expensive timing sets, it's not that unusual to see this. So here's the deal. If I have a spec on my card of 107 and I'm getting 109 here, what that tells me is that this camshaft is installed a couple of degrees retarded or late. The timing is late. The higher the number on your intake lobe center line, the a higher number on your intake lobe center line means you have retarded cam timing. A lower number on your intake lobe center line means it would be advanced. Now on this engine with such a mild cam, being uh, retarded a couple of degrees we're not really too worried about that especially since this is a small cubic inch motor that's going into an s10 it's a really light truck what retarded cam timing does guys is it causes your low end torque to diminish slightly and it gives you a little more top end power but being off by a degree and a half um, or about two degrees is really not going to make much difference. Now there is a way to change your cam timing. You can put an offset bushing in there and you can you can play with that timing and fix it. But um, on an engine like this, we're not going to worry about it. We're within two degrees. We're right there. We're very close. So we're happy with that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our duration. We want to verify our duration. Now duration in a nutshell is this. When my valve opens, right, my valve is, is closed here, let's say this is your valve, the rocker is going to push down on it, the valve is going to open, and then it's going to close. During that event, from the time the valve opened, left the seat, fully extended, and closed again, how many degrees did this crankshaft rotate? That's what duration is. So, in other words, if this crankshaft rotates 265 degrees while that valve is open, then my camshaft's duration is 265. Now we have a spec for a starting point on this cam. It is 0.005. The reason we have that, if we look at our lobe up here, we can't start anywhere on the base circle and get an accurate number. So what they do to get duration is they have you come off of the base circle a certain amount. In this case, the cam card says we're going to come off this base circle five thousandths and at that five thousandths mark, we're going to read our degree wheel. Once we get that reading, then we're going to document how many degrees we have there. We're going to go all the way up to the top of the lobe travel and all the way down the other side, and we're going to stop at five thousandths. We have to check our duration the same way that they checked it. So let me show you how we do that. So there we go. We are, we are not moving. That means we're on the base circle of the cam. Now, what we do is on the base circle, of course, we're going to zero our indicator. So we have a starting point. Now remember, we said we're going to go clockwise and we're going to come off of the base circle, our specified amount, which in this case is 5,000. 
So we're going to watch our indicator, and again, it says intake open right here. So we know the intake's going to open here. So we're going to come off, there it goes. We're going to come off the base circle. We're just going to go five thousandths right off the base circle. Now we're going to look at our wheel and we're going to document how many uh, degrees we have. So here's our top dead center right here, and we are at 22 degrees. So we'll make a mark right there. We are at 22 degrees. before top dead center. All right. Now we're going to continue. We're going to go all the way to the top of the load travel. We're going to open the valve completely and we're going to go all the way back down and we're going to stop at five thousandths before the valve closes. So here we go. We know that our lobe lift is 280 here. So we've already got five. So there's one, two, 80 our valve lift is the same so now we're at the max lobe lift but we have to go all the way down to the other side so we're going to go there's 80 this is one and this is going to be two so we're going to stop at five thousandths before that valve closes and we're going to read our wheel we're going to look at what our wheel says okay so now if we look at our wheel here it's 68 degrees okay so our duration you guys as if you look at the way the wheel went is going to be around this way we have 68 degrees right there so our duration started over here and it went all the way around this way and so here's what we need we need to keep in mind a half a turn or a half a rotation of this wheel is 180 degrees okay so from top dead center to bottom dead center, from this point to this point is 180 degrees. That's literally half a turn right there. So from here, if we draw a straight line to 180, so we know from zero this way, we have 180 degrees from here to here. But we have to add the travel here and the travel here because this is where our duration was. It, it started here on this side of top dead center. It went all the way around and it ended right there. So we know a half a turn from here to here is 180. So we got 180. Then we need to add the degrees from this point to here, which is, we said, uh, 67. So we have 67 degrees here. And then we have to add the degrees that we traveled past TEC here and we had 22. So we're going to take 22 and put it there. Now we're going to add these numbers together because that's the total of number of degrees this crankshaft rotated while that valve was open. So 180 plus 67 plus 22. And we get 269 degrees of duration. So our spec is 270. We got 269. That's really close. So we've pretty much verified that this is the right cam. Those are the basic steps of cam degreeing. Now um, we didn't do the exhaust side but that's really it. You, you do your lift, you do your duration, you do your, your, your center line. One of the things that you can do is if you want to get lobe separation you do your intake lobe center line and your exhaust lobe center line you add those two together and divide them by two and you got your lobe separation. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. So, so that's, th there is more than one way to do this. This is not the only way to do it, but this, uh, hopefully this kind of gives you a good idea of basically what we're doing. We're verifying that the camshaft is timed correctly using intake lobe center line, and we're actually verifying that we have the right cam. Now, now the less expensive cams like this, hydraulic flat tap it made by engine pro you are going to get specs that vary slightly and they might be off one or two degrees here and there but it's, it's not going to be off like a bunch and honestly a couple of degrees on a mild cam like this is not going to make a dang bit of difference in the way this thing runs so uh, i'm confident that this is the right camshaft and that it's dialed in uh close enough to make me happy when i step on the throttle and if you have any questions, you can ask below. There is actually some more steps that I didn't get into, but uh, this is cam degreeing in a nutshell. It's actually not that hard. You just have to take the time and do it and set it up right. 
And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching and I will see you very soon, I promise.